In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you some of the creative ways in which you can customize a mask. We'll show you a short example, and then we'll show you some things we did to create that in PowerDirector. I'm starting out with this footage of a clock and the clock has a second hand as we play it, we see it moves across the magnified view of the clock around the numeral 5. So what we're going to do is use this as our background but superimpose something on top of it. So I want to go back to the beginning and once I'm there we're going to take our second video clip, drag it from the media room and place it on track number 2. Now this track happens to be one showing the charging of some kind of electronic device. It's sped up, but when I play this, we see it goes from zero all the way to 100%. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this, we'll make sure we have all, all the digits here, and I'd like to use this and superimpose part of it on top of my red clock. How do I do that? Well, with that highlighted, I go to the frame where I want to do my design from. I highlight clip number two, and then I click on the Tools button above the timeline and choose my Mask Designer. And so what I'm going to do here, I have a host of options for masks that are default masks. And in this more recent version of PowerDirector, I have another one. It's the button on the bottom below all the selections called Create a Custom Selection Mask. I'll click on that, and now I see the image on the lower track. I also see the one I want to do with the masking for. All I have to do is take the left mouse button and create the points where I want to shape my mask. Now this one will, will be pretty simple. It will be almost rectangular, so all I need to do is find four corners that I want to use and then close it out. Now if you want to, to change this at all once you've clicked on it, all you need to do is move the mouse over any of the corners and you'll see the two white lines and you can adjust it without adding any other points. I can make it wider, narrower, I can make it more what I would consider perfectly rectangular. So you can make these adjustments very easy once you've started the mask. Now one challenge I have here is because the one is over here and I'm off the screen this one won't be exactly square but that's okay so now I have the basic shape of my mask the one thing I want to do is I want to start the mask at the first frame so I'm going to take my mask one take the mouse and drag on the diamond drag it all the way back to the first frame of the mask you notice it's zero here. Now I deliberately started the mask at 100 because I wanted to make sure I had all these digits covered when I created the mask. But now it will start with the first frame. So I'm going to click on OK. The mask is there, but it's not the size I want. And there's some other things I'd like to change by customizing it. Let me show you what we're going to do. With that track highlighted, I'm going to double click on it and that will take me into my PIP designer. A couple things I want to change first of all. I'd like to put a border around a mask. You may not know that you can do that, but I have the properties tab on the left side. I'm looking in object settings. Let's drag down and see if we can find a border. And this we do. So I'm going to click on the border. I've got my default border here, but what I'd like to do is change the color. We'll go from uniform to a two color gradient and then I'll take the end width, click on that color, get my color picker. I'm just going to go to a black, click on OK. That creates a slightly metallic look on my mask. So what I can do is design the border in the way I want. I can change the gradient direction to change the look of the mask. I think I'm going to flip over the other way. So this is darker anyway and there is my mask. Now I want to do something else with it once I have the border. I also want to change the size of it. So I'm going to take this and with the mouse I'm going to drag and move the whole thing over to the right. I'm also going to take it and rotate it this way a bit more. And it's still too big for me 
So another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to shrink it. So I'll take any of the four corners and drag down. And we're going to make it a bit smaller. And then what I'd also like to do is distort it. That's what the little blue handles are on the inside of the corners. And here we're going to make it look like it's kind of warped a little bit. I'll do the bottom one. And then I'm going to zoom out and I'll do the top one too. And now I've got a slightly curved mask that's bigger on the left side and less on the right side. I think I'm also going to take the border size and knock it down from 3 to 2, a little smaller. Then we'll magnify it again to see what it looks like, what we have here. So here we have our mask. It has a border. It's not, it looks like it's a little bit bent, if you will, and it's in the place that I want and the size that I like. I'll click on OK. And then when we're done, we're going to go back to our main screen and we'll play. And there we have our little mask quite modified on top of my original video. So it's a very interesting way in which you can take only a few of the properties available in the PIP Designer and add them to what you do when you develop the mask in the Mask Designer to make it look quite different than it would otherwise. So that's just a sample of some of the ways in which you can be creative in customizing masks in CyberLink PowerDirector.